This episode of Not Another Gaming Podcast is brought to you by Echo Gear. Do you want to fully optimize your battle stations or even just clear up some space on your desk? Well, Echo Gear has got you covered. What do they get you covered with? You might be asking right now. They have you covered with their beautifully crafted mounts for up to three monitors. Setup takes 15, maybe 20 minutes, you know, at most. We'll say 20 minutes at most. If you go past 20 minutes, call Chris. He did IT for like three weeks. He might be able to help you out. Like five. But their helpline, their helpline is open 24-7. You make sure you use promo code WickedGood at checkout at either echogear.com or at Amazon to save yourself 15% off. That's promo code WickedGood at checkout, Amazon.com or echogear.com, and you're good to go. Strap yourselves in, everybody, because we're going live for episode 139 of Not Another Gaming Podcast. I am your host this week, <clears throat> Dr. Bob, and um, we're missing somebody, you know, we're missing someone this week, and the last time we were missing this person, we had to get another fill, we had to get a fill-in, uh, occasionally, every once in a while, we'll bring people up from the bullpen, you know, from d- the double-A baseball, we'll get them to come up, maybe do a little relief mm. pitching every once in a while. Double-A. Honestly, maybe just, you know, wet the towels for us. You know, that's it. Throw some water at us. Give me a towel. But he's back. Chris, how are you I doing? I fucking pal? knew it. How are you doing? I knew my, it. My co host and special guest this week, Chris P. How you doing, pal? Motherfucker. I knew that was coming to I was like, damn, um, I know this can't be as smooth as it sounds. First of all, I've never heard the analogy, uh, wet the towels. Wet, I've yeah, never towel. I've never heard that before. I'm putting uh, a bunch of different uh I'm making new ones. No, it's all. You should hit the the patent station for that one. Uh, but I'm doing mm-hmm. good, man. Thanks for having me on this week. It's it's a pleasure to join you guys. It's uh, Chris P, Tall and Lanky, Flex King, Kyle. Thank you for the three months, pimp. Speaking of Flex King, you know we we launched a shout out to everybody uh, in the organization with five minutes uh, in preparedness, and nobody wanted to come on. So it's just me and Chris this week, guys. Uh, it's crazy. Um, you know what are you gonna do? I mean, uh, oh, it, oh shit! Uh, who's the who the fuck's this kid? Do we have a live? Do we have a live stream of a, a cornfield right now? Are we, <laughs> do we just Bob, have a scarecrow cam or something? What's going on? It's, it's me, Bob. It's uh, it's Kung Fu Ken back at it again. Oh my god! Who invited this guy? With the white vans. With the white vans. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hi, everybody, Ken, I'm back. Yep. Thank you for uh, filling in once again. We appreciate it. I guess I don't. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good, you know, hanging in there. Glad to be back, I yeah, guess. Maybe. Another, another day, another dollar. Pretty much. Yeah, we are just fucking raking it in. That intern pay ship is, you know, it's really getting you through school. Yeah. It, it is, I'm telling you. I'm working towards that, uh, that 95 Toyota Camry. Uh, wait, nice. we, we got you. Wait, did, you didn't graduate, did you? No, I got, uh, this is my last year here. Nice. So, realistically, would we be able to sign you off on intern hours, do you think? Probably, maybe, possibly. If, if, if it falls into what you study, I think we could. Yeah. Why? Well, hold on. Why would we not be? Able, we've been doing this for three fucking years. Why would we not be able to do it? it yeah, it has been three years. I think we can. Find me. Wow, we're gonna sign Kenny off on his fucking intern now. That's dope. No. At the Ken, I'm a Wicked doctor. Games. I'm a doctor. That goes a long way for interns. Doctor. I'm just gonna show. You gotta show a little <laughs> leg. That's all. Show a little more leg. Uh, <laughs> Feet? Little leg, little feet, little leg, little feet, little leg, little feet. feet. No feet, just little leg. Um. Anyway, let's get right into it. How was uh? We'll do a little weekend recap. You know, Chris and I, we didn't do anything special this weekend. Nothing at all. No. Nothing. Nothing exciting happened this weekend for us. So, Ken, what did you do this weekend? Uh, I drove eight hours up to Canada to visit family. Oh. Drove eight hours back, and now I'm back in uh this shithole, Massachusetts. Wait, so you didn't stay over? You just drove there, went to whatever, and then came right back? <laughs> No, no, I was, I was up there That's for... 16 hours in the day, would you okay. say for an he got, hour? He got dinner with his family and drove <laughs> back afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I was up there for like a long weekend, Saturday to Tuesday. Um, had to be back home for work and other stuff, but yeah. But I did, so. Just a lot of driving. Playing like, games? Sounds like a blast. Yeah, uh, played some TFT a little bit. Because the game's not in the best shape right now, in my opinion. Uh, I may suck a little bit, but that's besides the point. Probably not true, but don't fact check that. Um, I can watch. Playing. I can watch. I can coach you if you want. 
Oh god. Trust me, I don't need any coaching from you. It's like, oh. I'm 100% certain I don't need any coaching from you. I don't know about that. Uh, I've been playing a game that this company may know, Dauntless. Uh, I've been grinding, been grinding uh, that game out a little bit. Uh, and personally for me, I like to switch between games because I get really bored uh, pretty easily. Uh, so I've been also playing some Fortnite, um, some regular League of Legends, and um, MLB The Show 19. Dude, so good. I've been playing that too. Dude, I'm in, a, I'm in like my 30th season, and my guy is unreal. Like you put anything over the plate, it's 500 feet. Easily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I've been playing. What about you guys? Sweet. Um, I can kick it off if you want, Bob, unless you want to go first. Yeah. I, I know it was very, yeah. uh, it was an uneventful weekend. I mean, not a yeah. lot of, not a lot of love happening, not a lot of booze. It was just overall okay. Uh, I think I just went to a normal bar on Friday, uh, Kings, you know, the bowling alley. And then uh, actually, no, on Friday, I actually went to a wedding. Um, yeah. So WGG's own Papa Dom tied the knot with his now wife. And let me tell you something. I was blitzed. My lord, I slept on my bathroom floor by chance, uh, not by chance, by choice, because I thought I had to throw up, and I didn't, and then I was like sitting on the ground, I was like, wow, these tiles are like so cold, and this feels great, so I was just laying on the ground, in just a short little towel, like fully clothed still, and then I pulled a towel off the, off the rack, I was laying on the ground in a towel, and like nothing else, just playing on my phone for like 45 minutes, at one point I was like, dude, just get up. What are you doing? Long story short, awesome weekend. Uh, Dom's wedding was absolutely incredible. Super fun. Uh, I might have cried a little bit because I'm going to be alone forever, but what can you do? Uh, that was my weekend. What I'm playing, I'm playing GTA 5 currently. And I just started playing GTA Online because I opened up the casino. Go figure because fucking degenerates do degenerate things. And I'm wasting like every dollar I make in the game at the casino playing blackjack. And there's a wheel that you can spin every day. And you get like either XP or money or there's one Lamborghini that you can get. Guess who got the Lamborghini on the first spin? Yeah, boy. And the first thing I did, I went, I went on like eBay. I was like, can I resell this? Like how much would people pay for this? Not really a market for it yet, but I have the eye out there. Rob, what'd you do this weekend, brother? Uh, yeah, I mean, Thursday was the rehearsal for uh, Dom's wedding. That was... uh interesting you know we went out did the rehearsal <clears throat> went back had, some, had a nice little dinner um friday the big day you know i honestly i'm gonna have to say this dumb little selfish on friday there was yeah. a lot of pressure on us yeah like it was his day Fuck it up, was man. his fucking day okay yeah. when i walked in there looking as good as i looked i'm sorry that i had to like steal some of the spotlight you know what i'm saying shut the fuck it was up. Fuck, it was tough walking in there in that fucking suit Dude, you know what was tough? Like, them having to say their vows when your buttons were screaming on your undershirt. <laughs> Couldn't hear anything. But all in all, shout out to Dom. It was a beautiful wedding. I cried maybe three or four times. Oh, yeah. easily. Dude, yeah. when we were standing, like, while they were actually getting married, like, standing oh. in the line, every time I would turn and look at the water, it was literally like... <sighs> <laughs> and I would just snap right back. Like, I didn't go anywhere, but I was losing it. Oh. When she, when she, like, walked out and I saw Dom just, like, stunned. Oh, yeah. Crushing, I was like, oh, my God. This yeah. is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm so happy to be a part of this. It's such, like, a force of habit. As soon as, like, that happened, I saw the crown. I, like, went right from my pocket. I was like, where's my jewel? Or, like, where are my cigarettes? <laughs> I was like, oh, can't do that out here. Like, and then, back. Oh, my God. Another huge shout out to, of course, his uh, beautiful wife, Lauren. But also his little brother, Kevin. Shout out to Kevin who gave quite possibly the most touching speech I've ever heard in my entire life. I was holding back sobs at the table. My girlfriend was sitting there staring at me like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, shut up. You don't fucking get it. You don't understand. <laughs> You'll never understand. I'm leaving. Oh, my God. It was fucking beautiful. Good job, Kevin. You made, me, you made us all proud. I went up to him afterwards because he shouted us out. He was like, got to give a shout out to Chris and Rob. Chris, thank you for helping me write the uh, write the speech or helping me like review the speech. And Rob, thank you for you know like helping to support me. And I was like, Kevin, you son of a bitch, yeah. you fucking son of a bitch. I stood up, and took I a went, bow, and everything. I was like, fucking my yeah. day now. Oh man, I went up to him afterwards. I was like, I am so fucking proud of you. Beautiful, you did a great job. 
but yeah, that it was great. Uh, and then we went back. Did you not go back to the hotel? No, I did. I went home to change first. Oh, okay. Yeah. We went back to the hotel, smoked a couple of cigars, uh, drank a little bit more. And then I woke up at uh, the brisk 7.30 a.m., probably still drunk, and then drove three hours up to New Hampshire uh, to go to my one of my best friend's bachelor parties. And that was a fucking event. Um, I'll tell you guys later. about what Yeah, well, don't incriminate yourself. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> but it was wild. Uh, it was a good time. And then I drove back on Sunday. And then I, the best decision I've made in a long time, when I'm taking time off of work to do stuff like over a long weekend or something, like if when we went out for the bachelor party and whatnot, and we left like Thursday, Friday, this time I took off Monday and Tuesday. So I had like a nice fucking cool down period coming back from everything. So I had two days off up front the weekend and two days off following. And I just fucking chilled. Wow. Veterans but, um, do veteran things. Dude, I'm telling you, I'm doing it every single time. I'm taking six days every single time from here on out. Sounds um, incredible. But I've been playing a lot of TFT. Uh, I ranked up quite a bit. I hit plat three last week. And then I deranked down to plat four after the most recent patch because uh, some of the items were bugged and people were just abusing them. And I didn't realize it until I lost three games in a row. And I asked and I was like, hey, what the fuck's going on? Why does everybody have a frozen heart? And they're like, oh, yeah, huge bug with uh, frozen heart and assassins. It uh, triggers twice. And then when they alt, it triggers again. So your fucking attack speed drops down to zero. And it was the most broken thing I've ever seen in that game even though i've only been playing it for a month but i ranked up i was right there underneath uh fedmeister uh twitch pretty prominent twitch streamer um disguised toast his smurf i was ranked higher i was ranked higher than him at one point free ads is coming out right now whatever dude shout out to them come on the podcast um and who else there were a couple others a couple other like big fucking tft streamers i was right you know like their mains are up a gm their Smurfs are at plat, like diamond. And I was like right there, right above their Smurfs. So I'll take that. I'll take that. I can't put in 10 hours into the game every single day like they can. Just a modest like three. Yeah. But I'm right there. I'll take it. Yeah, some of but, us have to work. I mean. Yeah, fucking crazy. It sucks. I'm about to quit my job and just play TFT. I'll that's, do that. It's probably not a good idea. I'm no business coach. But I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a good move financially and lifestyle wise. I really don't think that's the right lifestyle wise it that's possibly the most beneficial thing i could do in my nope. life no your nope. room's gonna smell like fritos and you're gonna have fruit flies what are you talking room? about dude first of all i'd be healthier if i did that because i would wake up at like a uh, like a nice 9 a.m i'd shower go to the gym come back shower again make myself a nice little breakfast and then stream tft for 10 hours straight whatever um no. <laughs> <laughs> all right well let's get into it um there was some huge fucking news that dropped today, and I, we would be remiss not to talk about it. So you guys know about it. I'm sure everybody in here watching right now knows about it. Everybody on this fucking platform right now knows about it. Yeah. But one of the biggest names, arguably the face of Twitch, is stepping down and going over to another platform, Mixer. Ninja, the one, the only, is moving on to Mixer. For God knows how much money he got a license deal for. All I know is the guy moved there, or he's mo in the process of moving over to Mixer, and he's already got over 100,000 subs on it. That's bananas. Absolutely it's bananas. fucking crazy. Dude, you know what I can definitely wait for? That's inevitable. That's going to happen. The first, Has he streamed on there yet? No, right? Because no. he just announced he is it. Over 100,000 wow. subs hasn't even. Okay, so you know what he's going to do his first stream? There's going to be a, <laughs> maybe, but he's going to have purple hair. It's going to be like, oh, mix oh, like right. I have purple hair now, yada, yada. Um, long story short, that guy must have secured the fucking bag. Like, he must have got paid a dumb amount of money just because I, I watch titty streamers because, you know, horny guy, whatever. And this Twitch streamer, I'm, no free ads, I don't do that here, but she has like 70,000 followers, like pulls close to 1,000 views per stream. And she got... She got approached by Mixer. Of course, this is just her saying it for, for a six-figure salary. 
as someone who's not partnered a salary a salary a, a salary okay. um and that's someone who like i said is not partnered started streaming less than a year ago so if someone like that is getting offered six figures ninja must be getting offered millions and millions in like a salary and then he gets majority of his sub revenue and ad revenue and donations or whatever the fuck it is um jb genesis thanks for two months sorry i'm late guys just got back from the a's and brewers game nice man thanks for the sub but that guy must have got paid an arm and a leg and i mean if i'm his wife and if i'm him your life just completely changed even more than it is now if you're getting that salary because, I mean, not for nothing, Twitch doesn't pay out salaries that I know no. of. So <laughs> them, him going over to Mixer, there had to be something that's sweet in the pot. And it has to be a fucking crazy digit salary. Plus. Yeah. You know what it probably is? So he probably, got, if, if he legitimately got a salary, I would love to see whatever the fucking pay stub is out of this. Or just like any like verifiable information on it. But if he's making a six-figure salary, that's a guaranteed salary per year. He doesn't, that's something he'll never have to worry about ever again as long as he's working with. And then on top of that, he's getting his subscription revenue, he's getting donation revenue, and then all of the fucking ads that are going to end up being run on his Mixer page on top of all of his other sponsors. And merchandise that all the little the kids buy. So I, there has to be like a completely fucking crazy balance of, how much his payout is going to be from all of this. Because of course, Mixer, if they're bringing him on to be their new face of that platform, they have to be taking some of it. I want to know how much they're taking. Oh, absolutely. Because if they're, if he's, if he's essentially an employee, an employee if he's being salaried. Yeah. So I don't know how that works. So he went from a 1099 to a W-2 employee. So, yes. I mean, think about how much that helps but kind of hurts because if you're an independent contractor which you are if you're a full-time streamer you claim yeah. you claim your taxes at the end of the year you work from your house if, that's yeah. if they claim their taxes that's, that's what i'm saying that's what i'm getting at is you can write off everything your home is your office so you can write off your fucking electric bill you can write off all the equipment that you're buying for your computer you can write off everything like if you're making youtube videos you can write off the vehicle that you just bought for a youtube video because it's a business expense. You can so literally Beast, write up. That's, that's like the gray zone that Mr. Beast uh, has to worry about all the time too. Yeah. But that's on YouTube. That's, that's different. Yeah, exactly. He's, I mean, he's, his YouTube's popping as well. I mean, but uh, yeah, it's probably something crazy. Kenny, what's your initial, uh, what are your initial thoughts on this? My initial thoughts is it's great for Ninja. And I think it's also good for Twitch in a way. Um, yeah. When I when I look at the two platforms, I see Mixer as a much more brand friendly platform, with all the controversial news happening in Twitch recently, um, and over the course of its time as a streaming platform, I just think there's a lot more revenue to be made on Twitch if you're someone of that like upper echelon type streamer like Ninja is. Um, so I think the um, the subscription revenue that he's getting is also playing a part into it. And if he's making a salary, that's also, um, like, like Bob said, huge for him. He's never going to have to worry about it. Like his revenue that he makes every day, like he's making that set amount of money every year, regardless of how well his stream is doing. Yeah. Um, and also the brand, uh, I'm sure there's some sort of like brand deal where like anyone that, uh, Ninja sort of like helps to bring on to the mixture platform. Mixer takes a portion of that. Ninja sure. takes a portion of that. Good I'm thinking. sure there's some sort of like deal that's sort of being made that just sweetens the pot for him. Yeah, kind of um, like if you if you refer someone that gets a job at your company, usually they kick you like I don't know a couple thousand dollars or something. So it's probably something yeah. similar. Uh, another thing that I saw today that it it just popped back into my head is if you sub to Ninja on Mixer like now you get that sub and then you get like two free months of subscription to him. So that in itself, he's missing out on the $5 for the thousands and thousands of people that would sub to him monthly. So there must be something that they did to allow that to happen. Yeah, I'm sure that's, a, that's like a set amount of money that he's getting just straight up the front or straight up front based on like, yeah. I'm sure he's still getting that value out of it and that's Mixer <laughs> paying it forward, forward sort of way, like getting people subscribed to him, you know, helping him sort of regain subscriptions like throughout his time at the, on the platform. Um, also, I think 
and like the way that it helps Twitch, I think it sort of kicks Twitch in the ass where it's like, hey, we need to be doing a little bit better of a job with our mm -hmm. um, policing of certain things and, you know, making this platform more brand friendly. Because overall, Twitch is still going to be the most popular streaming platform. Um, Mixer got a little bit of a bump. Um, but I think this hurts Twitch a little bit, but it also helps them out and sort of like gives them a reality check of what's going on. Yeah, I, I think it. Yeah, yeah Chris. No, no, all you. All right, I was gonna say I think this gives more. I think it's more beneficial to Twitch overall. I I feel like there was there's like some bad blood between Ninja and Twitch. Be, I mean, the second he announced uh, that he was moving to Mixer, they like unverified him on Twitch immediately. And, yeah, <laughs> this, immediately it happened. So there has to be some sort of bad blood behind it. But um, like on top of that, it, it, you're right. It, it forces Twitch into a position that they're eventually going to need to make changes. And those changes are going to have to be to like accountability. You have to hold the people that represent your platform accountable for their actions. And if you don't, or if you do it in an unjust manner, guess what? There's other fucking options out there. And I understand that Mixer is not as popular as Twitch, but if somebody as you know, if someone can go make a name for themselves on another platform, you know, make a living off of it, why would they need to, you know, stay under the scrutiny of a platform that doesn't justly, you know, represent their, their community and their members and the people that bring them the fucking eyes and bring them the money. So I think this, this forces Twitch's hand I don't think it forces Twitch's hand as much as a lot of other people are claiming. A lot of people are saying like, oh, they're, now they have to do something. I don't think so. This is one streamer in the top 10. So at the time that Ninja declared this, he was, only the, he was the seventh top uh, most sub to streamer on Twitch. That's one out of 10. He wasn't number one at the time. He hasn't been number one for a while. So, I mean... Yeah, it shines a light on a lot of the negativities that come from streaming on the Twitch platform. Yeah, it puts the ball into Twitch's court. But that's, in all honesty, they don't have to fucking pick it up right now. They could just leave it. They don't have to show their hands. They could just wait and just, all right, we'll see if this negatively affects us. If it does negative, negatively affect us, then we have to react to it. And we need to react in you know a manner that makes our communities and our streamers feel more at home here than they would somewhere else yeah but on top and then outside of twitch and mixer itself there are still other streaming platforms yeah. youtube is a huge streaming platform i would say arguably the second biggest after twitch just because of the whole youtube culture that there is currently yeah youtube is fucking gigantic um and then there's d live which i don't under i don't know if that is still a thing anymore no, it, it is yeah it, uh, it, it is it's just uh it's something that's very different. They're trying yeah. something different where it's strictly based off of cryptocurrency and you earn cryptocurrency by watching other people. To me, it sounds like they're using people to mine this cryptocurrency for them, but that's a conversation for a different yeah. day, but it does exist. And Facebook. I don't think, I don't think though. Yeah. There's Facebook streaming too, but I don't, I don't think the, I heard the crypto mining rumor, but I don't know if that's actually, I don't think there's ever any proof of it. But on top of that, that entire platform revolves around the balance of that crypto at that time. To put, and do you see how volatile cryptocurrency is yeah. at any given time? So if that, if that stock drops or that crypto disappears, then what? Then you're out of money. They have whatever they made off of you and you're not getting paid for it. So yeah, so I, it's, it's weird, but it, this move is huge for literally everybody. I think there's all, I think this benefits every single person involved. It benefits Ninja because he's making a shit, a shit ton of fucking. It benefits Mixer because they now have a huge face to put out there. It benefits all the other streaming platforms because, hey, maybe this ends up being a fucking NBA draft someday. Yeah, that'd be and cool. And people, tr people are trading their top streamer. Platforms are trading their top streamers for like, oh, we TFT is huge right now. Let's let's take disguise toast. We'll give you fucking ninja back. <laughs> like it, when you fucking when he signs those deals, you don't know what's going on behind it. Like you have your lawyers might look into it, but still. So yeah, who knows? Maybe you, we'll, we'll and, give and, you again. You give us the person that just saw the stream today. We'll give you wicked good gaming. You could you got you could take them. Just wow, <laughs> go ahead and have them. <laughs> Ugh. All right, looks. Like, I guess we're going back to fucking mixer. Now.
Yeah, we're going to fucking Facebook Live. Fuck it, let's go. Yeah, I'm down. Uh, but what you were Instagram saying, live. How Instagram Live. Yeah, it's the wave. Uh, what you were saying, how Twitch doesn't show their hand, I am going to disagree with that a little bit because think of this. Ninja, who was the top streamer at one point and is arguably the face of Twitch, um, you can argue Shroud and whatnot. Yeah, not anymore. Um, but those people, he talks to other people that are in the same echelon as him. So when they're talking today, like they texted the whole day talking about like when he's going to announce it, like they're close. And once they find out like what they're actually offering them, and if Ninja actually is getting an incentive to recruit these people, now it's time for Twitch to step their shit up and be like, hey, Shroud, um, we love what you've been doing for us here is what we want to offer you to make yeah, sure we, that... We also don't know, if, we don't know for sure if he is being incentivized to try to bring people over to Mixer. I, it, it's highly likely because of like the acquisition and the deal that went on like it's not there's no confirmation there's no confirmation of pretty much anything outside of him going to twitch i mean him going from twitch to make true yeah, pub publicly he has said that um i think the only person he's actually like sort of like ushered in or tried to usher in is bugger the fortnite world champion solo um from the past weekend who's that? um shut up but he he did say that he's not going to like try and like drag people over to mixer he's gonna let his friends make their own decisions based on what they think is best for them. Yeah. So, I mean, that's publicly. Privately, he may be doing something differently. We, we don't know. Um, we can only make sort of like inferences. Based yeah, it's a very nurtured basis. answer, though. His PR guy is probably like, yo, you have oh, to yeah. say this. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, who knows? It's a wild move. It really came out of nowhere. But I guess time will tell what happens with this move and kind of what the backlash of it is to the Twitch platform itself. I, I mean, this, it leaves a void in the upper portion of Twitch right now for other people, other content creators to fill. And I mean, like everyone's been saying, imagine if his, you know, his live streaming posse decides, you know what? We're going to stick with our boy Ninja. We're going to go over to Mixer 2. That's even more people. That's just an even larger void. So imagine if like Tim the Tatman, fucking uh, Lupo, they all go over to Mixer. I don't know how likely it is, but there's absolutely a possibility. And then Mixer turns into the big leagues and Twitch turns into AAA. So like they nurture the people up to build their following and then they move over to Mixer. And Kenny's double uh, A and D live. Yeah, that's, uh, that's sad. <laughs> there you go, guys. Bye. <laughs> Toodaloo now. Uh, but yeah, any final any final thoughts on the whole ninja thing? Because we went on a tangent about that. Yeah, it's huge. We yeah. you can't not talk yeah, about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I don't. I think it's good for him. It's. I think it's good for everybody else too. So, whatever. We'll see what happens. We'll have to see what happens in the next like three to six months. Like by January twenty uh, twenty, we'll have a better understanding of how this actually affected everything. Yeah. This is like when drugs have to get FDA approved. <laughs> they can't get approved for like 12 fucking years afterwards because you need to see what happens yeah. like vapes and jewels what about we're gonna be coughing up our fucking lungs and jewels what are those just, no just fucking cranking lithium all day must be good for me <laughs> alright well you guys I mean we just talked about the fucking biggest fort pretty much the biggest fortnite streamer on the planet moving over to a different platform I guess we have to talk about more fucking Fortnite now because you guys need. I, I let me preface this. I wanted nothing to do with this fucking topic, and I'm the host tonight, so I could shut this down at any given moment. And we'd, still, we'd still talk about it. It's like one of the big things yeah. that's ever happened in esports. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind, you fucking assholes. I can shut right. this. I can shut this shit down at any time. I'm the host tonight. I am the captain. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, Chris, want to start us off? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. You start us off. You guys want to talk about this? Lead, lead, lead away. Absolutely. So I'm just going to kind of give the overall gist of the whole thing. Uh, so the Fortnite World Cup happened this past weekend. Yep. And um, the winner of it brought home $3 million. And if I pronounce it wrong, I apologize. It's the first time I've ever heard of this kid. It's either Bugga or Booga. And he brought home $3 million. Second place brought home like one point nine, And everyone within the top 100 made like 119,000 or something crazy like that. Um, 
a conversation I had with my roommate who was watching it on the couch. Uh, shout out Jimmy. Shout out Jimmy sometimes. But he was like, I haven't heard of any of these people. So I was like, all right, so there's a difference between a pro and someone that you know of. Think about like all the CS pros you know about. You didn't yeah. know about them until you started watching them competitively. They, they, they weren't ever streamers beforehand. They were just like grinding the game behind a keyboard in a dark room. So like you never really knew them, but that once they actually were on the main stage and did well, everyone knew who they were. Then they started streaming and stuff like that. Same reason why when Booga won, he got stream sniped by like a dozen people in his first game playing. And he was just like, what is going on? Everyone was just like dropping next to him, not killing him or anything like that. It was wild. Um, but all in all, Bugga, I'm just going to say Bugga, uh, won $3 million at the World Cup, which is the biggest payout. Uh, the World Cup as a whole is the biggest payout that an eSport has ever paid out. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that, Kenny. I feel like you know that so, scene a little bit more. League of Legends. So, League and Dota pay out more. So Dota as a like entire so yeah, I'm an individual, which happens individual, every year. Yeah. yeah, individually, this is yes. the most someone yeah. has ever been paid out at an eSports event. In the in the history of esports esports events, um, as a sort of like entire tournament per se, uh, I believe last year's TI and this year's TI is like a couple million more. Yeah. Um, Same thing like with 30, League Worlds, like thirty six million or something like that, and like the top team gets, God knows how much. Um, yeah, but you yeah, know it, what's you know what's great about those though? A lot of the payout gets fueled by in game cars, like in game purchases. So, so many I'm, developers are yeah. are just missing the ball when it comes to that oh, stuff, yeah. and Valve is on top of it. Um, Same yeah. thing with Riot too. Yeah. So Chris, I think we mentioned we've we've talked about this in the past before. Um, when it comes to League Worlds and uh, the Dota Championships, typically going up like into like semifinals and shit like that, or right before all that stuff, they'll release. Um, the previous champion the previous year's championship skins because every in league of legends for instance the champion teams get their own skins for their own uh champion so going up until that point they'll release like 2014 up to 2018 and like i think it's like 60 percent of the money spent on those skins goes to the payout That's so it. it's it's an economy in a it's a uh, a championship payout fueled by the player base on top of like the money that is already guaranteed pretty much so how fortnite doesn't do this or maybe they are maybe they are and they're just not saying it but it's i don't know because i mean people drop a bag on yeah. skins and whatnot within that game there has to be something happening behind the scenes that they just don't publicly talk about because there's a shit lot of a shitload of money that comes in and like they even even given the people the ability uh, given streamers and like creators a chance to make money off of that by using right. creator codes so they like they have to be pulling in well they are pulling in the money for the non creator code redeem redeems whatever um so they have to be doing something they're just not talking about it, in my opinion yeah i'm sure there's like a percentage of the revenue that they make off skins and battle pass sort of like purchases and whatnot it just goes like all right we're putting this amount aside uh for you know this full year um we won't touch anything um under that but once we hit our goal uh then we start to put it back into the game yeah do you know what's driving me nuts about this whole thing everyone on the internet who's just like not giving the kid the credit that like he obviously deserves by saying oh well like uh he made three million but do you know how much his org's taken like do you know how much he has to pay on taxes first of all yeah, well, who, yeah, who, who ca yeah. cares about who, that? Oh my god, he's only bringing home $1.75 million you know, after right, you, know, you know who fucking bitches about this? The people, people that, that will, yeah. they're never going to be good enough to do any of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that are just fucking oh. jealous and like hate, hate mob at the kid. Let the kid fucking enjoy it. He won. He's in the fucking spotlight right now. Yeah. Let him bask it in. Let, let him bask it in. Yeah. Oh, he's, 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 good. And to make even a better point, like he destroyed the competition. Mm -hmm. He, the person in second place, so they did like their points, how you get points, kills, and then placement and whatnot. To give a little perspective on how bad he destroyed the competition, first place Bugga, fifty nine points. Second place uh, Psalm with thirty three points. Mm -hmm. So oh, twenty six points. Twenty six points. He doubled. He doubled the points. It's like <laughs> he's bringing home one point nine mil, and his, if his like org is taking. Let's say, like, I don't know, 20% of it is 20%. It's like, 
he's still coming home with you know 1.5 million at least it's like yeah then you're 20 percent for taxes how old is this kid 16. 16. holy shit. yes 16. i was making i was making 80 dollars a week when i was 16. oh my god yeah so i don't know people love to hate though yeah i saw some i saw some really touching videos of uh, people that came in like the top 100 Mm-hmm. like kids coming in the top 100 and they go home to their parents and they're like i saw a video of a, a father lifting his 14 yeah. year old son up being like you did it yeah the yeah. kid's name was uh, king the kid's name yeah, was king. Yes. In fifth place. Yeah. yeah that's Took home nine hundred thousand. holy and then whatever it taxes whatever but like still yeah. like, what <laughs> dude if my kid ever fucking brought home that money i'd quit my job at burger king and i'd be like, <laughs> this is like son I made, uh, we made it, you made it. Nah, I was like, oh, like, oh, great. We're going to put it away in your college account that I already set yeah. up for you, AKA my savings account. And um, we're going to go on, I'm just going to treat you. We're going to go on a trip to Dubai, uh, just the four of us. I already set the money aside, son. Don't worry about it. When you turn 18, you're going to have no idea that there's a half a million dollars missing, but it's taxes, son, taxes. <laughs> I'm going to be a terrible dad. Yeah. Well, you probably never get the chance. Yeah, um, true. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I mean, you got to meet a girl before you. Uh, no, you don't necessarily have to. Like, you, they can. You can like internet meet are someone. Sper- and just, are you like, a sperm donor? Um, I almost donated sperm because my aunt works in some. Uh, she owns a company that pairs people up, and she was like, "Oh yeah, like the only things are like, you can't drink for like sixty days. You can't. You like okay. you could have never smoked a cigarette in your life." You can't suffer from any sort of like anxiety or like, and you had to graduate college. I'm like, um, I, I you know, I, I, I'm I just, gonna, say, I, I can't do any of those. Sorry, I, I missed missed all one, four. Of yeah. okay. uh, one of those boxes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, did you watch any of the tournament, Chris? Yeah, yeah. So I was, um, it was, it was before it started on, oh. um, third. No, it was on uh, Thursday. Right, Friday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yeah. Okay, so I watched a little bit of it on Friday, like Friday morning, but mm-hmm. I didn't watch the majority of it. I have my roommate uh, keeping me posted on the whole thing, but when I could tune in, I would, but I didn't yeah. really watch much of it. So so Friday, they had the creative um, tournament, which uh, the popular streamer and FaZe Clan member, Scissors, his yeah. team sort of like won it all, um, which is fantastic because Scissors basically created creative. Um, he was a huge... Um, sort of like influencer in that whole space of creating his death runs and whatnot, and those are sort of widely popular. Yeah. Um, also, they had the pro am on Friday night, uh, and then Saturday was the finals duos, and then uh, Sunday was the big Kahuna final solos. But uh, yeah, dude, the way that those guys play, like I've played, I'd never played Fortnite religiously, but there was a period of time where I would play it daily for a couple hours a day. It's a whole, it's a whole different game when you play competitive. Yeah. It's it's like you watch the final circle and there's like thirty people left. It's just how does that work? I don't I don't understand. That. Everyone's like building on top of one another. Like no one's getting killed. Everyone's tunneling themselves in. It's just like a whole different ball game. Like if you watch any other competitive game, it's pretty much like the game itself. People are just better at it and have better strats. But with Fortnite competitive, it's literally a whole different game. Yeah, oh, it, yeah. it's pretty much all based on. If you can build well uh, and you have some decent sort of like gun skill, uh, that's, that's what the fu- what's the point of even having guns in that game at this point? Who fucking cares? Um, oh. I mean, you you kind you kind of need that unless you like fall into your death or you die in the storm. Yeah, you don't need guns in that game. Yeah. You said to yourself, thirty people are just building around each other for twenty fucking minutes in the last circle. But at the end, sometimes there are like hail offs where it's not like a gun battle at the end. It's like who can survive the longest by putting fires down and healing up and stuff like that. Shit, dude. That's fucking exciting stuff to watch. This is why Fortnite's crazy right now. Riveting and I'm shit. Really enjoying it. Yeah. It what? fucking stinks. I'm not gonna lie, I played it the next day when I was like, how much did that kid win? I was on my computer like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like they were training? I was I was looking up online like best key binds to build fast in Fortnite. <laughs> Dude, Q Q just asked uh if TFT tournaments are ever gonna be coming, and I'm almost positive they are. There's no way that game doesn't get like you know how the Fortnite Friday thing mm. is a, a thing? There's no way there's n- TFT Tuesdays. Yeah. I mean oh. close to release they had the uh the Twitch Rivals tournament that had a bunch yeah. of like streamers in it. Um TF Tuesdays. 
Oh, uh, oh, shh. I'm, 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 I'm gonna cut that out. I'm gonna cut that out. I'm right here. Riot, I'm right here. <laughs> Doc Bob here, Doc Bob here, hire me. I'm, I'm right here. This is easy money. Bob, how about you shut the fuck up and we do it? Good point. Cut this shit out. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Riot, don't, don't, don't hire me. Him. Don't hire me, Riot. I, I, I revoke, my, revoke my offer. I'm revoking my application. I'm resigning. Um, yeah, it's, um, I am almost, I can almost guarantee you that there will, will be tournaments at some point. The top players uh, have already been uh, approached by professional organizations like, hey, we want you to represent us. I, you know, I've yet to be approached by a professional organization. I, I give it a couple more weeks. Uh, oh, no. Every Dude, game what? you pick up, you think you're a fucking pro. Remember when you played Counter Strike for a month and a half and you were a pro? Fanatic yeah. was knocking down your door. Mm. It's funny how that works, I need, huh? I needed to stick to it. That's all. I was the best fucking opera you guys have ever seen. It you were an op in the second round with no armor. Yeah. <laughs> and, I'd fucking, every and I would round. own. I would fucking 5K every single time. Every round two, 5K. Yeah. My, uh, scrap, by, scrap, by can I get a, a little help here? Five oh my god! Up. You want to see the clip that Scrap took from his uh, that I took from his stream? You mean the only clip that I've seen from you playing Counter Strike? Yeah, like, hey, really? Oh, okay, shit. hold on. Let me go back and I'll get the fucking clips now. I already, I really I already deleted this. all of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember I did that? <laughs> yeah, you piece of shit. Um, Bob was like, I outfragged you every game when we were playing for that three hours. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. As we're talking, I'm deleting the vod. Like, oh, what are you talking about? <laughs> no idea. Delete. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, shit. But yes. Um, hey, look, if I hit diamond, I can enter into a tournament. Do you disagree, Ken? Because you play the game. I mean, maybe... You probably have to be really close to getting into Grandmaster, I would say. Um, I think Ma I think high diamond. It's there's what two two levels in di or three levels in diamond, two in master, one in Grandmaster. Yeah, yeah. If I could get to high diamond or master, I think I could enter into it. Yeah, I could see that. Really, GM, room for you, Bob. GM, I don't think I have. I could put enough to it to get. If I could put in 10 hours a day, I could fucking do it. But I, I don't have that time. I took all this shit now. Like, Bob, you're not going pro. You're not going pro. Once you go pro, I'm going to be your biggest fan ever. And I'm going to act like I've been <laughs> I'm going to delete all the podcasts. <laughs> like, Bob, I've always rooted for you, man. I'm going to put Doctor on my chest and yeah. Chris can put Bob. Wipe the whole fucking Spotify playlist. <laughs> nah, I'm going to get a tattoo of a B on my left uh, ass cheek and a B on my right ass cheek. And I'm going to bend over at your tournament. So it says Bob. Yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, let me hit fucking upper tier diamond and I'll see what I can do. Because at that point, the whole, the, the tier system of diamond, master, grandmaster, there's one challenger player right now. That's it. Or two. H Hafu and, um, fuck. Can't remember the other streamer's name, but there's like two people that are actually challenger. And then everything else, there's like 50 people where it's diamond one to challenge. Can I also point out the fact that that was the most Bob pivot of all time? Talking about like the great weekend this kid had winning $3 million into Q you're going to be pro soon. Q yeah, ask. Okay. I figured I'd have to talk about it. We talked about a tournament. He asked about a tournament. I'd, I wanted to give, you know, our perspective and then also talk about how I'll probably go pro at some point. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> speaking of pro games that speaking of games, nobody fucking cares about. Let's talk about uh, Activision and Call of Duty because why, why not? What's the Activision again in hot water? Um, but before we get into their hot water situation, there was some leaked footage of... Um, not leaked. Not leaked? No, uh, they had the multiplayer reveal today. Okay, well, yeah, I, I was at work. Well, get um, got, get got. <laughs> hey, man, I'm not in school anymore, Ken. <laughs> I have to work. I'm like not either right now. Ken. Oh, get got times two. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, so, all right, you expound on it then. Because okay. it showed what? It showed 10v10 with no HUD or something? Uh, so here's, here, here's the breakdown. So we had a 6v6, which looks like it's going back to 6v6. Um, Bob, you haven't played multiplayer Black Ops 4, but they made the switch from 6v6 to 5v5 in pub matches. Uh, so it looks like we're going back to 6v6 for pub matches. Competitive, still unknown. Um, we had 10v10 matches, 
um, 20v20 matches, and then the 2v2 gunfight mode that they showed off uh, last month, I believe. Um, they brought in a bunch of streamers, a bunch of uh, popular streamers, Cars JD, uh, TP, um, and a couple other. Dr. Disrespect, Shroud was there. Um, basically just showing off the, the new game. There was a lot of multiplayer footage, a lot of stuff to sort of sift through. Uh, so far, it looks like a completely different game. It still has some aspects of Call of Duty, but for the most part, they've revamped a lot of stuff. It's a lot more realistic. Um, the, uh, what is it? Um, like when you shoot your gun, your crosshair goes everywhere. Yeah, that looks out of control. They'll probably need to Recoil. tune that. Recoil. Recoil, there you go. Uh, that looks like way out of tune, so they'll probably have to go back and check that a little bit, or maybe that's the way they want it to look. Spray um, patterns like Counter-Strike. Yeah, yeah um, they're going to turn this into Counter-Strike? Why? Not necessarily Counter-Strike. There's a little bit of Siege in it, um, a little bit of Counter-Strike in it, but like they're bringing a bunch of good mechanics to the game, which gets me a little bit optimistic. Um, they've let me down year after year after year. I have spent money on them year after year after year. I will buy the game this year. Um, and uh, we'll just see where that goes. Um, also, they announced their $200 uh, pre-order sort of like collector's edition that's coming with... Hard pass. That's coming with night vision goggles. Oh! Little... Still hard pass. Little throwback to Modern yeah. Warfare 2. Up on the sitting in, Yep, sitting in the, uh, the GameStop line waiting for my collector's edition uh, to be handed to me by Dom Papa. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dom Papa. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, that's pretty much the gist of what happened today. Um, they had like a 2v2 bracket at the end of the stream. They talk with developers, uh, whatnot, but there's a lot of gameplay on the internet right now. Um, so I'll have to go through and sift a little bit more, but I watched the majority of it today. Ken, can you confirm, uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare is going to be cross-plat at launch? Yes. So Call of Duty will be cross-platform. Um, when you load into the lobby, there's like a signifier if you're playing on keyboard, um, like a keyboard will pop up, playing a, a controller, controller will pop up. So it goes off the input of what you're playing on. Um, so that looks like how they'll do it. Um, I'm skeptical of it. Uh, Fortnite has done it and it works seamlessly. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, I, I mean, mean cross platform should be good. If I any guess. game is going to follow up after Fortnite to do seamless cross platform, it's probably Call of Duty. Yeah. Um, I don't know, like, PC, Call of Duty, just, like, it isn't for me. No, like, we, we, are, like, we, we are wrong. That's, that's where you're wrong. Um, pubs on PC. You're fucking wrong, Ken. No, th that's what, well, I played uh, the original Modern Warfare. I played that on PC, yeah. but I played Pro Mod, which was completely okay. different. It was a completely different spin on competitive Call of Duty. So yeah. it was strictly Search and Destroy. But classes were limited, so you can only have one scope per team. You can only have two SMGs per team, oh, and then the last two have to be assault rifles. I like that yeah. a lot. So, like, you kill the sniper, you know that they don't have a sniper left on the map. Like, you can't pick it up or anything like that. Yeah, all, yeah. all the graphics are dull, so it's mainly going for uh, frames. And I loved how the classes were limited because it just changes the whole way you play. Because at the beginning of the map, it's like sniper on sniper. It's like mm -hmm. if you think you, about you would have to determine which person on your team would get which I which gun. I like that. I exactly. like that a lot. There should be that game mode should be in every fucking first person shoot. Yeah. yeah. And I like, guess I guess what I meant was that just like I feel like Call of Duty is a console game and I think it will always be a console game. Um and like I like for me in my opinion like the like I played Pro Mod, Pro Mod's really fun. Um but like base game wise, um like the port over to PC just like doesn't feel like Call of Duty, in in my opinion. I, don't I agree. Know. I agree. I, I agree with that. It's like yeah. if I play MW two on Xbox compared to playing MW two on the PC, like it's still fun. It just doesn't feel the same. It yeah. doesn't look the same. It doesn't move the same. Nothing's really the same. But I think competitive wise, well, I, I'm I'm only biased. I, I'm only biased because I took it really seriously. So like, there's only a couple of games I've taken super serious in my life, and Pro Mod was one of them because. There was like different team speaks you can go in and like different ventrilos where it was like people that were pretty much trying out to be a certain spot on the team and they were like drafting teams pretty much. I was like, I used to, I don't know why I remember the guy that I used to play was named was Shaka, S-H-A-K-A. 
and he was the scope on the team and literally like a bunch of other teams would approach us be like like we want him on our team and, like he would jump ship they would be like all right like let's scrim today then or, like it got pretty serious yeah. um but that's why yeah, I'd, I'd, buy I'd definitely be that. the scope on any no no you'd be the no. fucking shotgun no i'd be the riot shield you have riot shield bob running around with his between his legs oh my god I don't know, man. I'm, I'm still gonna. I, I don't think I'll buy Call of Duty at launch this year. Um, I'm definitely gonna just watch people play it, but I'm gonna give in like I do every year and buy it. I'm gonna buy it at launch. No, you might no. even get goggles. I don't know. Max, you need no those. fucking chance. I buy this. Game. I mean, think, look at the Good. value there. Night vision goggles aren't cheap. <coughs> Are they like Dude, actual night break. vision goggles? Yeah, they're right? gonna break in two weeks. Look, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. I don't want to talk. This is fucking pissing me off. It doesn't matter. What they give you for their fucking special edition because they're gonna fuck it all up at some point anyway. They fucked up Black Ops 4. That was the best fucking franchise. That was the best title. Those were the best titles in the entire franchise, and they fucked the whole thing up with Black Ops 4. Okay. You lost my you lost my faith in you. You lost my hope that, you know, the franchise will continue to be good. And you lost my fucking money. Okay. Activision, Call of Duty, you never get another fucking dime from me. I've said it before. I'm going to continue to say it. I will not purchase another Call of Duty. I can't wait That's for you it. to buy it and act like you're I'm going pro it. in it. That'd I'm be fucking it. hilarious. I, I, I hope you don't, don't Bob. Honestly, because you know what? I want to see you on Call of Duty to get better because no. you don't need me carrying you. I know you don't what? carry me ever. You never carry me in a. You will never carry me in a Call of Duty game ever, ever, Bob. Pick. Pick a single Call of Duty game in the entire franchise over the last 20 years. Pick any one. I will destroy you. Kung Fu Ken, a.k.a. Simple. Skump Jr. That's it. Destroy. Well, you know what? Guess, guess what Activision also did. What they do, Bob. And that they're going to do to Call of Duty because they suck. Uh, free DLC on Call of Duty. Oh my, it doesn't fucking matter because they rip everybody off with microtransactions and predatory fucking egregious microtransactions. Yeah, guess what bad. they did? Just take a wild guess. Red Dot <sighs> site for five bucks. Uh, Bob, <laughs> what, what, did, what did Activision do this uh, awful company? So Activision promised, promised, you know that whole nostalgia train that everybody rides with old games from like the 90s, early 2000s? Everybody's all hyped. Oh my God, it's going to get an HD remaster. They're rebooting the game finally. We're finally going to see this old classic hero come back. Yeah, well, you know, Activision took that. Uh, they promised that there were going to be no microtransactions. Uh, and guess what they did afterwards? They put in microtransactions. They promised everybody for Crash uh, Nitro, Crash Team Nitro Racing, Crash Team Racing Nitro. I don't fucking remember the actual title. They promised, don't worry, guys, there won't be any microtransactions in this. At launch, game launches, reviews come in, everybody's enjoying it. Guess what happens after the reviews come in? You know what? Fuck it, we're going to drop. Now's the time to drop our The reviews are out, boys. Put them in. Exactly. They did it with Black Ops 4. They did the exact same thing. It's, this, is, this is peak like, fuckery from video game. I am, it's shocking to think that, has, I don't know, has EA done this before? Have they waited for reviews to come out and then they put their microtransactions in? Because the only one I can think of is Activision. They did it two fucking games in a row. They did it with Crash and they did it with Black Ops 4. It's kind of brilliant. Waited for reviews. It, yeah, until people catch on, which everybody did. It's fucking, I think it's absolutely fucking insane. Like, you might as well be up front about Hey, yeah. the game's gonna have microtransactions. You can spend your money on it, or you don't have to. It's that simple. What's disappointing is that they come out and say one thing, and then they turn their back and they do it over and over and over and over again. Activision, please <laughs> don't fuck it up. Please, please. I fucking said it. I said it was going to happen. I said it last time, and it happened. I can see into the fucking future. Why do you think they call me Zoltan Bob? I know what's going to happen with it. The same exact thing is going to happen in Modern Warfare. The same thing. They're going to wait for the game to come out. And on top of that, in the current state of games journalism, which is fucking ridiculous, it's disgusting that 
like we're part of games journalism and it's it kind of hurts to say that because the current state of it is sad where every it's just hate culture it's mob mentality everybody's upset about something nobody's happy about nobody can just enjoy something you know you can't just enjoy a game now you have to find what fucking political affiliation is behind it why isn't the game doing this why can't we represent this why does it have to be that everybody needs to be upset so guess what? Every fuck it, every games journalist right now is already upset because the game is taking a brutal fucking turn in what they want for gameplay and what they want for story. That's fine. I think that's perfectly okay. You want to play a, a brutal, fucking gritty, gruesome war epic in Call of Duty? I'm all for it. I think that's great. I think you're making the right turn in your franchise. And I think this is probably a decent time to do it. But you have to know that game's journalism right now is going to fucking tear it apart. Yeah. So when that game comes out, the reviews are either going to be, it's another Call of Duty game, we're going to give it an 8.5. Good job, Call of Duty. Or it's going to be, it's another Call of Duty game, this time, you're killing children. <laughs> 7.8. Does, like, it, it, there's no change in it. So mm-hmm. I don't know what happens. I think after the whole fucking tidal wave of game's journalism, freaking the fuck out upon release the reviews are going to come in i think i think real journalism will honestly probably give it a fair and solid review because what it looks like it looks like it should be a pretty good game in the yeah. college franchise captain price is smoking a cigar in this game exactly 6.8 exactly that like that's me- that's a mentality and yeah. it's sad it's sad that people can't just enjoy the games that they want to enjoy. I wanted to enjoy Black Ops. I didn't enjoy it for any fucking ridiculous journalism reason. I didn't enjoy it because Activision fucking sucks. That's why. So, in short, <coughs> be prepared for the microtransactions to come following reviews. Doesn't matter. There's going to be a whole shitstorm when the game releases, and then there's going to be a second shitstorm when the microtransactions come out. Yeah. The, I, mean- I, I don't know. I'm I'm just letting I'm calling it. I see into the future. This is what's going to happen. My my opinion on microtransactions is that yes, they are awful and yes, they should be destroyed from the gaming industry. Um, but overall, I do have to say that as long as they are cosmetic, yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Like okay. I don't care if they're cosmetics. Cool. If somebody wants to spend you know a hundred bucks to try and get like I don't know a new skin for their gun. Cool. And I don't have it. Okay, that's fine. It's just when they start to add things that sort of affect the gameplay and and force people to yeah. sort of put money into a game they've already put money into. That, that's where that's where everything just turns around for me. And it's like it's really disappointing that they just continue to to fuck up. I mm-hmm. don't know how else to put it. It's gonna keep happening. And nothing's gonna change until literal. I'm the most. Uh, anti get government evolved person. Keep the keep the fucking government out of everything. When it comes to this shit, nothing's gonna change until fucking politics get them. Well, they're involved. Uh, exactly. A, a bill is being sort of drafted as we speak. I don't necessarily. I haven't looked into it all that much recently. Um, but I can see probably by maybe next year, maybe the year after. I mean loot boxes and this whole randomized like put some money in and get whatever we or whatever this randomly generated sort of process takes takes hold that whole aspect of it i think is gonna die um and or it changes or it changes yeah i mean i don't know i don't know if it can change into something worse because right now you have a cesspool of sort of random custom loot boxes that are surprise mechanics um, if they if they were to sort of change the direction and be like, all right, you put in you know a hundred cod points and you get this skin, okay, like I I'm putting in this money, I want this specific thing, I'm not getting anything else, like, okay, like I think that's the way it'll change, but loot boxes will die eventually. If they die, they die. They die. <laughs> I don't know. I hate I hate all of this. Oh. I fucking hate. I hate games suck. Thankfully, I when my internet went down the other day, I was able to beat God of War. Finally, I finally beat. I forgot to mention that I finally beat God of War. Wow. Make more games like God of War. 
When did that game come out, Bob? 2018. Mm. What year is it? 2019. Mm. Interesting. Makes you think. Hmm. Hold, okay, hold on. I got <laughs> uh, I got a PlayStation 4 in December. Okay? And I got 80% of the way through the game. And then I think I picked up Counter-Strike, and then I, that's when I just stopped. Yeah. Bob's backlog games just make me sad. Oh, it's really fucking bad. It's really and sad, now, though. like, now when I get pissed off at TFT, I'm just going to go back and finish Kingdom Hearts, I think. And then yeah. start playing Spider-Man. And then start playing Bloodborne. Yeah. Don't play Red Dead Redemption. Too long. And the mechanics are clunky. I'm almost done with it, though. I'm like 75% of the way through it. I do it with every fucking single-player game. I get 75, 80% of the way through the game, and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to take a... I'm going to take two days off. I'll come back to it afterwards. And then I come back to it eight months later. Yeah. Like I did with God of War. But I am grateful that I played the rest of God of War because it's a brilliant game. Good job, Sony Santa Monica. Good job, Corey Bar uh, Barlog. Bar 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 Good job, Corey. Um, <laughs> Corey B. Beautiful game. I cannot wait for God of War 2, which is unconfirmed, but I'm going to say it's happening. Uh, make more games like that. Yeah. Okay. That's what we need in yeah. the industry. Oh my God. Imagine if somebody fucking a game journalist bitched about God of War. What would you? I don't, I don't know. Violence. Too much violence. You're killing things in front of a child. Promotes violence. Promotes violence. Uh, oh, my skin crawls. How bad? It's so bad. Yeah. I know it was rated M for mature, but like that was too mature. Uh, it's gonna be a six point two from. Yeah. That's an argument right now. For Call of Duty, people are being like, "Oh, kids are gonna play this. It's a mature game. Make your fucking make the parents responsible." Okay. Yeah. How about that? Be a responsible adult. Yeah. Don't get your child GTA Six when it. They don't need that. You could argue they do need it, but... Yeah. Alright, we got anything else we gotta talk about? Let's fucking... Let's get this shit over with. I'm, I, gotta, I gotta watch the rest of uh, The Boys. Let's land the train. The Voice? You watch The Voice? No, The Boys on Amazon. It's so fucking good. I suggest everybody watch it. I'll give it a go. I, I binged six episodes in two days. Okay? That's how fucking... Um... Alright. Let's land the train. Um... I would like to shout out Ken. Thank you for coming on again at the last minute. Um, appreciate it. Got to give a huge shout out to Dom and Lauren. Congratulations, guys. It was a beautiful wedding. Thank you for having us involved. I really appreciate it. Huge shout out to uh, Big Kev Dog. Most touching speech I've ever heard. Sobbed at the table. It was beautiful, man. You're beautiful. You're beautiful, man. Shout out to you. Oh, you're beautiful, man. I'm crying now, man. Um, another big shout out to, uh, the strippers that were dual fucking oh, dildoing each other with the fucking... There it is. <laughs> yeah, if you guys are listening, shout out to you guys. Were, Phenomenal there performance. There were Darth Maul and each other in the middle of the living room in New Hampshire. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, uh, um, yeah, that's all I got. Shout out to you guys. Appreciate it. Shout out to everybody tuning in right now. Ken, what do you get? Uh, thanks Actually, for having me on. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, let's, get, let's just get this over with. Chris, what do you yeah. got? Uh, shout out Kyle and shout out JB Genesis for the subs. And uh, shout out Q for the bits. You good guys. You good guys. Wow, yeah, she fucking had something. I didn't expect that. I'm sorry, Ken. I didn't mean to cut you off. All right. It's all right. All right, Ken, Ken, what do you got? Uh, thanks for having me on again. Um, it's been great, as usual. Love filling in for Dom. You know, bringing some youth to this podcast. It needs it. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Dom and Lauren. Dom's like ninety five thousand years old and mm -hmm. married. It's good for him. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. We all find love eventually, I guess. Chris. Yeah, my time's coming. Give me a couple more decades. I'll I'll be there. Yeah. Um, Stay single, dude. Fuck it. I mean, yeah, that's probably your best bet. I mean, if, you, if, you, if both, <laughs> both of your girlfriends, if they listen to this, you guys are both in deep water. Bob's talking about chicks doth mauling each other, and Kenny's saying stay single. Dude, it was a fucking sight to see. I bet it was, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. It was fucking awesome. I also won anal ring toss, too. Anyway, Ken, what were you saying? Uh, that's it. That's all I got. Thanks for having me on. Congrats to Dom and Lauren.
Uh, I hate you, Chris, for not making me your plus one, but, you know, I'll get over it. Whatever, whatever, I whatever. I didn't have one. I didn't have yeah, one. Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay, oh, sure. I could have been your girlfriend. Whatever. Bye. You're not, you're not my um, type. Literally three of us had plus ones. It was me, John, and uh, Connor of Gem Hammer and Son. We were like the only two. We were the only three people who had plus one. Fine. I remember Dom specifically asked me. He was like, are you still with Kaylee? And I was like, yeah, it's been like a year and a half. And he was like, all right. I guess I can give you a plus one. And I was like, you really don't have to. <laughs> like, don't worry. No, about look it. at me. Like, you really don't have to. <laughs> Please. Uh, okay, whatever. Next wedding. Uh, we'll invite everybody. No. Yeah, Kenny's, oh, Kenny's wedding. Yeah, Kenny's wedding. Yeah, we'll invite everyone to Ken's wedding and his graduation. We'll let you, we're going to dox his, uh, the, the wedding at the fucking wage. Don't do that, please. No, we're not going to. All right. Anything else? No. Before we sign off? That's it. All right. Well, <clears throat> thank you, everybody, for tuning in to episode 139 of Not Another Gaming Podcast. I'm Dr. Bob. I appreciate you guys all for coming by. I appreciate my guests here today, my co-hosts. I appreciate everybody watching them live. And if you're, wa- if you're listening to the podcast, but you're not watching live and you want to watch live, you can watch it live at twitch.tv backslash wikigagaming. If you're watching it live and you want to like, you know, show somebody, you know, Friday or something, hey, listen to this great podcast that I listen to. You could find Not Another Gaming Podcast on all podcast platforms. Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Apple Podcasts, <laughs> Spotify, uh, Radio.com, other podcast things. Yeah, those things. Yeah, there's other ones, I'm pretty sure. I don't fucking know. Um, but if we aren't on your preferred podcast platform, let us know. And we're going to ship a bunch of emails to Dom before he gets back and be like, hey, look at all this work you have to do. Get us on this podcast platform. Welcome back, asshole. I hope you enjoyed Croatia. Or is he in Croatia? Yeah, Croatia. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed Croatia. Um, you can check us out on all social media platforms at Wicked Gaming, except for Twitter. We are at Wicked Games. Um, you can check us out on YouTube. We got to finally figure out the whole, uh, clip thing. We'll get to it at some point. We should be getting more content up on YouTube soon. Uh, it's youtube.com backslash wicked gaming. You could join our discord. If someone wants to pop that into chat, just search wicked gaming on discord. I don't know how it exactly it works, but we're on there. Yeah. Um, and you can also, you know, help us out on Patreon. It is patreon.com backslash Wicked Good Gaming. If you guys want to help support us, continue to support us. We're here for you every week. Uh, we stream, say, you know, occasionally. Um, and we like to bring you the content that you guys want to see, even though everybody shits on us for the vast majority of the time. Everyone shits on me the vast majority of the time. Sometimes on Chris. Not often on Ken. I, I'm pretty much the only one that does that. Yeah. But if you want to help us out, our Patreon is right there. Let us know. We're here for you. We love you. Thank you for tuning in for episode 139 of Not Another Gaming Podcast. We will see you guys next week. Is Dom back next week? Yeah, he'll be back. Dom will be back next week. Um, we'll let him take the fucking night off again. It doesn't matter. Yeah. We... I, I texted him today and I was like, hey, you're really not going to make the podcast? That's a little fucking selfish. Wow. You were selfish on Friday with the whole wedding thing. Yeah, and now you're just, just going to miss the podcast. All right. Whatever. Yeah. Child. But tune in next Thursday for episode 140 of Not Another Gaming Podcast. We appreciate it. Just like Activision appreciates your money. Go ahead. Bye. <laughs>